Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Osari Ogboa and myself, Annette Felix, still here, uh, kick-starting the show this morning. And we're beginning with Off the Press. It's our program where we basically dissect the day's newspapers, just what other papers are saying, what's the government saying, and how does it affect you? We're joined in the studio today by Mr. Bolaha Olojide. He's an economic analyst, and as well as Mr. Ademola, all the way uh, from the U.S. Thank you very much, and good morning. Yeah, good morning. Thanks good morning to you. Thank you. Good morning. Nice to be here again. Good morning, Zalajade. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Studio. All right. Well, kick starts in this morning with the Daily Independent newspaper. And the big story here is saying forces in outside Nigeria frustrating PIB. And that's according to Lawal. It says investors threatening leaving over PSC's amendments vows National Assembly will tackle PIB this year. This one says, Southeast governors to roll out unified security outfit soon and set to track masterminds of Onweke police massacre. There's a big story here on COVID-19. It says, ASU warns against reopening of varsities. Yes, they're backing down on the earlier uh, directive to reopen on January 18th. Enjoy Youths versus NDDC. Let's see just how uh, that story is on the front page of the Daily Independence. This one here says FG to invest in uh, in the medicine for treatment of COVID-19. So there's there's a new treatment here that uh, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo has welcomed, and he said it's a drug that uh, you know we can consider for the treatment of COVID-19. INEC to review and introduce new technologies towards 2023 election. I'd like to review and introduce new tech for 2023 elections. A Papa gridlock, presidential tax force on ports decongestion, hands over to Lagos government. And about 2023 presidential election, this one says, Buhari plotting to bar some politicians. And that's according to Junaid Mohammed. He says Nigerians shouldn't expect credible elections in 2023. And uh, two more stories here on the front page of the Daily Independent. It says, soldier gets death by firing scored and cholera outbreak kills 10 in Benue. Let's, uh, let's begin with our guest who joins us from Zoom or via Zoom, um, Mr. Ademola. Which of the stories would you like to uh, highlight this morning? Thank you once again for having me. Obviously, I would like to uh, focus on the education sector, the conflict, uh, the conflicting statement in Ketin, um, on the resumption. It's really quite unfortunate that such an issue should even be coming up for debate at all. In one breath, you are saying um, nothing is decided yet. In another breath, you are saying January 18th stands on the further directive. Okay, people are going to travel all the way. And if as at this moment they are not sure if January 18th stands or not, then what, what, what are we doing? Then more importantly, I do not believe that schools should be reopening at this time. I, I, I quite empathize with students. They'd be home for over nine months. But I said that safety is paramount, yeah. Safety is paramount. And I think parents should be the one that should actually be at the forefront of, 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 of the call for schools not to reopen yet. Because as an artist in Nigeria, we are not sure if these universities have put in place appropriate procedures, uh, standard COVID-19 uh, um, procedures to, 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 to protect these guys. So personally, I, I do not think universities should reopen. As I said in one breath, we, we, we want school to reopen. Now they are warning against it. And, and, and I quite understand, really. And my own question is, we've had COVID for going to a, a year now. How come the AUC has not mandated universities to put in place a robust e-learning technology platform? Because that would have solved all these issues. E-learning right. would have actually helped us to scale through this period. So I, I, I don't think schools will be open because of the obvious risk involved. And I, I, I sincerely hope that government will quickly form an emergency meeting for the stakeholders and reach a conclusion on this matter so that these guys know whether they're going to travel all the way to their various schools or not. Today right. is Wednesday, 18th is quickly. just Monday. So if they're going to go to school, some of them will have to leave tomorrow. They have to make plans. 
So we need to make that call conclusively. All right. Today, we we uh, late, I later on the uh, sorry um, for interjecting, Mr. Hakim. Well, uh, later on the program, we will of course be having a more extensive discussion on uh, the decision by the government to either reopen or you know to maintain the shutdown. Yeah. I quickly also speak on the southeast governors okay. and their plans to roll out a uh, unified security outfit soon. Uh, Amotekun, you know, which have, yeah. uh, of course has started here in the southwest, has already come at a you know a little bit of criticism uh, from uh, their actions. There have been some you know deaths that you know that that are still being investigated. Uh, but generally, the idea of a southeast security outfit. Um, what are your thoughts on that? It's a welcome development, and this brings to fall two major issues that we've been trying to avoid. One, community policing. We've been talking about this for years and we are gradually getting there. Secondly, restructuring, okay? Regional security outfit could be the first step towards restructuring Nigeria. Nigerian police force has proved to be incapable of effectively manning the country. So I see nothing wrong in the, in the in Southeast region coming up with its own version of Amatekon. As long as the objectives are noble and as long as politicians are not allowed to hijack it. So I totally welcome it. I totally, totally, okay. totally welcome it. It, it, it. It's long overdue, really. All right. Uh, let's now move to uh, the Nigerian Tribune, and we're going to be bringing in uh, Mr. Gulang Olegide with this one. Uh, the major one, uh, one of the stories you can see on the top of the screen there says, the federal government to borrow 5 trillion naira to finance the 2021 budget. Um, it also says, uh, granted 4.7 trillion naira tax waivers in 2020. Uh, forget 2021, the economy may rebound in 2022, and that is from Kingsley Mogalu. Also, why we oppose reopening of universities, and that's from ASU. COVID-19, Lagos activates new oxygen plant. And uh, Edo governorship election petitions tribunal subpoenas INEC chairman. Uh, we also have uh, Oyo State gets its first female CP as IGP redeploys 16 others. Uh, the big one there, Nigerian scientists brief federal government on possible COVID-19 drug. Sounds like good news. Uh, they, they also highlight the extent of research on river blindness uh, drug. Um, the vice president excited, pledges uh, federal government support. Also, how Nigerians trade their NIN. Uh, they are just deceiving themselves, and that's uh, <laughs> from an NIMC official. NIN generated with BVN must be updated at enrollment centers, and that is from the NIMC. I also saw a, a post that was made by the NIMC saying that, you know, I think it, it basically we're trying to explain that regardless of if you've gotten it through your, through your BVN and you have it you know, uh, through your telco, you still need to go to the NIMC office uh, to get it registered. I'll see if I can find that post. And um, you know, it has created some uh, controversy um, over you know, the, the stress of having to get every Nigerian to have to go to the office, even if they already have it with the BVNs. But anyway, Mietiala's call for inclusion is a ploy to infiltrate Amotekun. That is from the OPC. Uh, abducted Ibadan farmer found dead after paying 1.65 million naira. We also have here Sanu and Nasu embark on three-day peaceful protest nationwide. Those are the ones that will be taken because of time. Um, Mr. Olojide, I, I think you can go on. Okay, um, which of this would you like me to take? Any. Uh, <laughs> Nigerian <laughs> scientists brief FGM, possible COVID-19. Okay, there's this uh, Ivan, Ivermectin or something yes. like that that is being used in some part of the world already. And the first time I saw it, um, I, I engaged with a friend who said, yes, it's in Nigeria and Nigerian doctors are already using it and it is working. So I, th I think it's something worth um, being brought to the fore so that if it can help us to solve the problem uh, of all, there are so many people. The, the second wave apparently is a bit bigger than what we had in the first wave. And it might just be uh, a way forward to help us douse all the tension and be able to open up more. Without vaccines and cure like this, I mean, with, a, with, with an effective cure, it can easily become another malaria. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that, that may be something we need to look at. So I'm, I'm happy that the government is trying to look at that so that we can open it up big time and make it available. We can get cured for, for, for COVID.
Okay, Qu quickly also speak on the federal government. I know we've spoken a lot on the economy and uh, what our situation is, uh, but borrowing five trillion now to finance the 2021 budget, Kingsley Mogalu is also saying uh, that um, the recession, uh, the economy, you know, wouldn't open this year. It's not likely to open this year. Uh, it, it has its point uh, because when you look at the fact that apparently COVID-19 has also crossed over into 2021, and we're already talking about lockup. Uh, a lot of sectors are still not fully open. Some that opened up before have been shut down. So those are some of the fears. I would say, okay, maybe if this continues as it is, yes. we may not be able to uh, have that uh, growth that we anticipated for 2021. Otherwise, if by February, for example, uh, all this COVID thing, uh, you know, the, the drugs is available, uh, the plan for vaccine becomes uh, something we can talk about, then... There's, there's still hope that maybe in the latter half, in the second half of the year, we might get out of, of, of recession. Okay, and uh, can you quickly be, be the On the five time. trillion, yeah. I, I think the press has been harping on this since the proposal, the budget proposal in itself, which was maybe like October. We have to move outside of just talking about it to, okay, what are the solutions to, to, to this matter? The truth is that we are not earning enough. It's a country that depends on oil. If oil is not doing well, where are you going to get the money from? You don't, we don't have a short-term solution. That is the reality. So if you don't have a short-term solution, the, the next thing you can do is to have a borrowing plan. However, because we have an entire year to implement the budget, though we have a borrowing plan for $5 trillion, so we have that one year to begin to see what else can we do to ensure that we don't have to borrow up to $5 trillion. But there is no way we are not going to borrow. We are not baking a bigger cake in Nigeria. The revenue is too small. Sadly. Okay. Do, do we bring in uh, Demola Akimbola here to talk about this issue? We know you're not in Nigeria at the moment. So I just want to briefly ask you, do you have yeah. your name? Do you have a national identity number? Do I have what? Do you have a national identity Second number? Say again, please. N-I-N. No, I don't have. Okay. But, you know, it's a big yeah. issue. It's a big issue here in Nigeria. And on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune, oh, we, yes, see, yes. we see a story here that Nigerians are trading their names. So would you like to talk about just how uh, the impact of this? Would you say this is, this is caused by poverty? Nigerians going ahead to sell their name. I have no idea how much they're selling this for. But we see the EFCC warning Nigerians against this, saying if, you know, a crime is linked to that name, you would face the brunt. I mean, you would get the punishment because, you know, it's a betrayal to you. So what do you think uh, about the story, Nigerians trading their names? How, do, how is it even possible to sell your United States? Well, it's possible. <laughs> well, the, the, the well, first question is, question is, is there anything Nigerians will not sell at this time to make money? Is there anything Nigerians will not do out of the, of the desperate situation that they, they find themselves, which is really quite unfortunate. Um, if people could go as far as selling their, their body organs and their, their, their body parts, so NIN is just, it's just a piece of cake. However, it, it's, um, it's, it, it's a further proof of the loss of trust and confidence in the Nigerian nation. The Nigerian brand has over the years lost um, its shine. So people are asking themselves, if I don't have NIN, what the heck? And you will realize that a lot of people who are desperate to have NIN are those who want to travel, who want to have their passport, who want to have things to do with government. Most of those who are trading it, it's either they don't know the importance or they don't even care. So it is not a work of development. Maybe we need to come out with um, a centralization program to let people know that they shouldn't. But if the process of getting it becomes too complex and too cumbersome, a lot of people will end up not even having it. And government needs to be more creative as we go ahead, as we move forward. Be creative in terms of how do you ensure that the generation of Nigerians have this number with a minimal force, with minimal stress. It's very important. For those of us who are not even Nigeria, we are not even thinking of it now because you don't even want to know how to go about it. In Nigeria, it's free over here. They're asking you to pay. So all of these things need to be integrated. So people selling the NIN, it, 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 it's so unfortunate. It, it's, it's a further testimony of the fact that we're at desperate times. People need money. They will send anything as long as it doesn't have immediate benefit to them. 
That's just the truth. Thank but you it's very quite much. unfortunate. Before we go over to the punch, I would like to use this medium to enjoy Nigerians. Please don't tell about your name. I was trying to register for something last night, and trust me, there are about four or five questions there, uh, four or five re required documents, and they said you can you can just upload your name as a substitute. I mean, five different requirements. Oh, so well. please don't sell your name because you would definitely need it. And I do hope the government can <coughs> speed up process the processes for us to register. And uh, let's now turn to the Punch newspaper. Yeah. It's uh, the big story here is about ASU. It says ASU defense sharing formula. Versity workers begin protest. And this is about the 40 billion naira allowance. It says non-academic staff threaten strike. Say 75% for ASU will breed corruption. And uh, lecturers are telling our uh, unions that they have an understanding with the federal government and they're asking them to fight for their rights too. Still on the front page of the Punch newspaper, the Naira slumping further, exchanging for 473 Naira per dollar. Uh, that seems like great news for people who have savings in foreign currencies, but not great news for, you know, every Nigerians like you and I. FG spends 6.46 trillion Naira on debt servicing personnel in 2020, and that's according to the finance minister. Buhari approves envoys postings six months after confirmation. Lawan alleges forces working to frustrate a petroleum industry bill. And uh, down here on the front page of the punch, we see Secundus, ex-minister, disagree over fueling of Fayoshi Makinde fight. Command NABS 4, as Lagos courts clashes, claim 14 in three days. And Amotekno disagrees as police fought core operation. So many other stories on the front page of the Punch uh, newspaper this morning. But let's run to you now, Mr. today. Which of the stories would you like to highlight? Let, let me quickly comment on this ASU uh, problem. It, it appears as if there is um, there's a problem in the law setting of these universities. Because you have a single institution, he has non-academic, non he has academic. And when there is a problem, non-academy goes to the federal government on its own. Academy goes to the federal government on its own. What kind of a structure is that? It's a single institution, and the Lord has set it up to already speak about how it will be administered. I don't expect that for everything that happens, different people are shooting at the federal government to come and intervene. So there's something wrong with the university system, and we need to fix it. We've been on 11 months issue with ASU. That has finished. Now you have NASU and SANU all coming out again to come and start their own problem. When, when are we going to get over this? So something is definitely wrong in the administration of the university system. Maybe the solution should even be coming from the universities themselves. But something is wrong. Interesting. All right. Um, you may also want to quickly speak on the PIB. Uh, it's come up uh, twice oh, now. Oh, yes. PIB is a very important one. Um, it is not an accident that PIB has been on the table for about 12 years. It is because there are contentious issues and there are people, there are establish, establishment people within and outside who love the way things have been in that industry and will fight to the last to ensure that that bill never get passed. So it's a very serious matter and for the National Assembly to, um, to, to make up their mind that they want to pass it this year. And in fact, I will, I will say, don't even think about this year. Focus on the first half of this year because it is going to be a battle to finish. What, what is it going to change? It's going to change. It's, it's, it changes the entire industry from NMPC being a behemoth that it has been and uh, literally unaccountable to the people. All those things are going to be there. The, the nature of the investment, the sharing, the petroleum sharing contract is, is an entire uh, 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 issue in, in that industry that we address. So even, even community issues, the, the communities where those, those uh, oil, oil uh, are found. Right. So there are several stakeholders, and these stakeholders are pulling in different directions. Okay, um, Mr. Kimball, I think we can uh, squeeze uh, you in for a few, just less than a minute uh, before we wrap up. Oh yes, fully I I align my views with that of Mr. Rodney in terms of ASU, NASU, SANU. I think we should put the blame squarely at the doors of NUC as well as the Ministry of Education. These are the two supervising organs for Nigerian universities. An attempt should be made to integrate 
staff unions. There's still no point you having ASUKO in one generation, NASUKO, because truly ASU cannot function without NASU. That's the truth. Neither can function uh, without the other. So we need to look at a way whereby we need to integrate what they're doing. Let's have one single union speaking on behalf of several universities. And also on the on, on the PIB bill, it's something that is long overdue. Instead of 12 years, I think it's even all good 15 or even 17 years. PIB is a 360 degree approach towards revolutionizing the administration of our resources in the oil industry. It, it addresses virtually all the issues you can think of. The industry is been too opaque. PIB is going to ensure that there's more transparency, there's more accountability, and of course there will be inclusion. I mean, inclusiveness in terms of getting stakeholders involved in running the affairs of the various segments of the industry. So it is something that we should be able to scale over this year, hopefully. Okay. All right. Um, Demola Akingbala, publisher of the Podium sure. Media, thank you so much for your time and for joining us this morning uh, on uh, Off the Press. Thank you. And same with um, Sambola on Lojide. Always a so pleasure much. speaking with you. Thank, thank you for stopping by. Yeah, thanks a lot. All right. Stay with us. Uh, we, of course, will be moving straight to talking about what happened today, January 13th in history. It's coming up next after this short break.